Right, in this video it's now probably um, nine months to a year since I made the last one and as you can see he's um, pretty much finished other than a very few minor details. Um, in this video I'm going to run through some of the electronics and software because and how that was built because a lot of people have asked how that's done. But if you have a look at him now, he looks pretty good, really, certainly very realistic um, and he's, even though he's statically parked up there in in uh, park mode, he's still interactive if I go near him he um, senses me coming near him um, I will uh, I will show you how that all works now okay it starts with um, a central chip that connects to the um, the laptop basically so he's run by software of course I'm um, just focusing there, there we go it's written in C sharp uh, so dot net you can download that if you want to um, and then down here we've got something called a polu or pulu spelled p o l um, o u i think um, it's called a maestro and it's a servo controller it's actually a very handy gadget because it's got um, digital inputs and outputs it's also got um, analog inputs and outputs and it's also then obviously got sort of servo controllers so basically what you can do is you can connect loads of servos there to it and um, you can then send commands by via this USB lead from your laptop and it will either move the servos there which are used for instance like his arms it will move motor controllers or send messages to a speed controller to move um, the motors for instance on his feet or uh, for driving and um, it will also receive input from various um, analog or digital devices which I've got led around here those are um, infrared proximity detectors and you'll see a longer range one there now if I pan back out um, you'll see that I've got five of these infrared proximity detectors, detectors and they match for instance the holes, there's one behind there um, two hang off under here where those two holes are and he's got two in the back of those foot motor boxes for his rear vision, if you like, for navigation. So if I um, if I go back down to the software now, obviously I had to write all this from scratch because there isn't an R2D2 software as you can imagine. Right, you can see there that um, oops, the screen went off. Um, you can see some of the default settings. So they're basically the channel numbers for the uh, Maestro controller. I actually use a 24. Um, pin controller or Maestro 24 and that one down there that I just showed you here is actually a Maestro 12 uh, because I wanted extra inputs and stuff like that so there you can see some of the, um, the settings he's got um, proximity detectors look for front middle right um, so on and uh, and you've got projector XY coordinates that obviously is controlled by the vision software right if I go and start this piece of software up it's just compiling there we go. So this is the R2-D2 core interface and um, this is basically, obviously there's a laptop inside him, a very small one, a little netbook um, with this software on it. So um, he's got speech recognition, if I tick that box there, R2-D2 speech recognition activated and online. Then we'll activate that of course. I'm going to take that off speech for a second. Activated and offline. Um, because um, speech recognition activated, it will automate, automatically activate the radar um, for navigation, just in case someone um, says obviously forward or gives him some kind of voice command which makes him move or go into navigation mode. Um, I'll just tick the box, puts the radar online anyway. And if I zoom in from that, you can see that he's um, from his middle foot, he's making calculations there about range of objects in front of him. I move my hand there in front you can see how um, the sensors are affected I'll just show you, I'll pan back a bit and just show you what that's doing there we go and here we go, look there's my hand down there and you can see on the screen I'm trying to do this one handed of course cor corresponding one there and over here I've got one of the foot ones connected which is slightly different and you can see on the screen there look it detects something off of his back right foot so that's a, the reason the reason the right foot is showing there's something nearby was because um, it's a, that one there is actually a long range scanner uh, it's up to about six feet or more 
and that well that's using the front foot and I've just I've just knocked them up here for you. There's his laser as well, he's got a little laser for range finding. That helps with the vision control system, um, which I've got another video on anyway. And that basically positions his head in an X, Y um, coordinate, so basically le um, a left or right. So in the, in the X, Y is actually used for the projector to move up and down. That way he can kind of focus straight at you. Uh, it gives it a much more real feel. Um, this contraption here, this chip, sorry, circuit board, is um, uh, it's a stepper motor controller. You plug the USB cable in over there and uh, he can then either use the Maestro controller or the stepper controller. The advantage of using the stepper controller is that um, obviously with a stepper motor over there, um, obviously they're a lot heavier um, current or relatively, but they um, they can position the head exactly to within you know a fraction of a degree really. And so that, that makes the tracking system much more accurate. Um, however, those things use a lot more current and hence why it's got its own um, driver board here. Just quickly back to the um, software here. A quick run through here, or what it does. Um, so like I said, we've got speech recognition up there, which basically an a activates voice commands. We've got vision and motion tracking, I'll show you once again in a second. We've got movement, which um, essentially enables him to be able to move around or locks him in position. Obviously he's parked up there at the moment. There we go. So we've got him coming, rolling off. And um, then you can switch off particular radars. Um, a lot of this is for debugging. Then we've got um, Explorer stroke self-control. You need a big area for that, obviously, so he can go strolling around. Um, my living room isn't ideal. And uh, and then I've been working on artificial intelligence, and I've got various manual controls over here. This just gives you, um, some, over this section here, some proximity um, detector readings. Again, really for debugging. So you can see that works pretty well. Move my hand around again, look. Goes into the red zone. That will automatically force him to stop or reverse, or um, he basically takes readings from all of these three sensors again the two left feet left and right feet ones at the front there aren't connected but he takes some um, readings from those and the software then um, applies a braking factor to the front left or right wheel which will then cause him to steer away from an object and of course if I had enabled one of the left or right ones um, if they, they get critical and they go beyond a certain value of let's say about there which is about 480 or something then um, it will stop that wheel completely or reverse it which will then steer like a tank where it will turn around on the spot pretty much. And then just quickly back to the um, the vision control system. This is what controls the head as I've shown already in another vision movie. Online. So there you go, he's got vision online. Um, it's quite. This is actually a really complicated piece of software. Again I had to write all this from scratch. And um, there you go, so down there, X, Y, you can see how it moves, the X axis rotates the heads and the Y moves the projector up and down and that enables the um, the uh, software to be able to track you basically, you've got various other options down here about tracking colour and that's where you can use the stepper B plus for the stepper motor or the Polo Maestro 6 or 12 um, to control the head if you'd rather use um, normal motors via a speed controller of some kind. That's that there and um, just close that off there you go and back to the front screen and that's pretty much it really and um, I just downloaded the .NET free um, C Sharp development environment or I think it's Visual Studio or C Sharp Express or something um, and in case you're wondering I don't do this for a living I sell houses for a living but it's um, Seemed quite an interesting hobby. I'm just going to give you one final look at him as he's finished. There we go, back in focus. I'm actually quite pleased with him. I've added a few extras which aren't in the original, by the way, in case eagle eyed notice. You'll see down there that there's a, an infrared uh, light within the restraining bolt. And the other thing I added was a bit more infrared down here underneath his feet. So it looks more like he glows when he's strolling around. And I've significantly distressed the bodywork, as you can see. So it looks like proper oil um, leakage and stains and 
made him dirty, basically a bit more battle damaged. But I think it makes it look a lot more authentic. Pan back a bit, there we go. And for now, that's pretty much the end of the R2D2 project. If anybody wants a um, copy of the software or any help or anything like that, feel free to um, drop me a message and uh, I'll buzz you over a copy or um, give you a hand where I can.